Coming up, I want to show you a simple text editor. Yeah, you heard it. A text editor app that is making over $10,000 a month. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, where we show you all the strategies that help you increase your app downloads and more importantly, your revenues. And in this video, I found a simple text editor. Yes, text editor. Something that you already have built in in your iPhone, like through notes, but a text editor app that is making over $10,000 a month. We're gonna figure out what they're doing right, how they're driving the downloads, and more importantly, how they're converting those downloads into paying customers. So let's get to it. All right, guys, here is the app. We are in Sensor Tower right now. It is for text editor. Now, they do rank number one when you search for text editor. So it's a great keyword that has traffic and they're number one. And I wanna kinda highlight when they launched. They launched in October of 2019. So not particularly too soon, but it's not in the very early days of the App Store. And I think this really speaks to volumes of how important ASO is, especially from what I can tell, they're not driving any paid acquisition. For an app like this, you probably can't. I don't know, you know, we'll see. But they do have text editor in the title, just period. And then the period most likely is there because if they just had text editor, it would not, Apple would not consider it a unique name. So you put a period or some other character in there so that Apple thinks it's a unique app name, okay? A must have text editor. I don't know if it's worth repeating the subtitle, but it's pretty good to have this. One thing I do wanna test is a couple of different things. So they are in the developer tools category and that's where I found them when I was looking for these type of apps to highlight on the YouTube channel. But another thing is to maybe have a high density of keywords. And so rather than having multiple keywords everywhere that expands it, one of the things I wanted to test and I haven't done so yet, but I think that these guys might be doing is just having text editor in the title, text editor in a subtitle, and then text editor in the keyword field. And that's it. So let's take a look. I'm gonna do this live of this recording. So let's look at the Spanish Mexico localization. Yeah, they haven't changed that in here. Then the other thing I wanna look at is I'm using a tool that I absolutely love called App Follow, which allows us to sort of keyword spy on our competitors. And so they're like, I put in number one text editor. This is the app that we're auditing right now. It's showing up for number one. If I'm gonna click on this real quick, and I just wanna get a sense of what keywords coming up. Okay, so they do have a lot of keywords that come up, which, you know, what I found really, this is just a gut feeling. When a lot of keywords come up, they're probably using a lot of keywords in their metadata. But when there's very few keywords that come up, it feels like it's keyword dense. So they might not be doing this trick. They might, they might not. I'm not absolutely sure, but they are number one for text editor and it is worth testing that I'm gonna test on my own. So the last thing I wanna point out in terms of this app is that it belongs to an app portfolio. So one of the strategies that you wanna be utilizing, especially when you have multiple apps, is cross-promoting. And so you can see Remove Objects is now the number one app. I'm not entirely sure what the app is, but it's probably like a pick eraser or a background eraser type of app and it's doing $40,000 a month, so congratulations on that, and it launched in 2020. So that's an app that's doing pretty well, and what he's been able to do now, Nam, I'm just gonna assume is the fact that he's been able to cross-promote. So some of these have really good traffic already and good downloads, and he's able to cross-promote his apps. It's a great strategy. We'll take a look at remove objects real quick. Yeah, it erases backgrounds. So it's a popular category, but he just launched in 2020 and now he's doing over 40,000 a month on this particular app. Maybe we'll look at it in a future video, but on this video, I wanna take a really good look at this text editor app. Let's get into the app itself. So here it is. Again, it's number one for text editor. Just wanted to make sure you guys saw that. I'm gonna open it up. I like this onboarding sequence. So browse and edit any file from your device or any cloud service. Cool, hit continue. It's showing me how to do certain things. Tap you to change font. Tap you to show line number, which I really like the line number stuff. View text in your favorite font and style, cool. And then here is the pricing page. So this is some of the best practices that we've been promoting. Show this pricing page on the welcome flow as a little X that's not as visible as you might want it. 
in the right hand corner. But overall, I think it's a good pricing page. Now we have covered that longer pricing pages do perform better. So one of the things that you should be doing is having a longer pricing page that sort of tells you what you get with the premium, the plus, and what's the difference, a little bit of social proof. So go back in our videos or look at which tests won pricing strategies and you'll see some examples there. But that's one thing that across the board, we're seeing that longer pricing pages are converting higher subscriptions. The other thing I wanna point out is it's 99 cents a week. So a weekly pricing is something that you can test. It might perform well for you. I have a couple of different clients that are doing weekly and they're doing all right. They're getting subscribers in there. So that is worth testing. They only have one option, 99 cents a week, which is like $52 a year. Pretty expensive for a text editor, but it seems to be working for them given the revenue numbers that we're seeing from Sensor Tower. Let's take a look at the features of the app. I'm gonna add doc one just to give you some simple things. Now I've used this app a little bit. It will lock me out after three. So I guess it already knows that I've been using it right here. I like that it's being so aggressive with this. It's kind of like, hey, you wanna pay or get out. And I do think that it's the right way to go. That's what my hunch says, because I think most app developers tend to wait too long. And one thing that you should notice is that fact that they're still given a trial, right? We have this debate with other clients where they're giving away, let's say three different documents like this does, this app does too. And they're like, hey, should we have a trial? But we're already giving away three free documents so you can use the app. Should we still have a trial? My gut and my hypothesis, and we're gonna test this, is that yes, you should still have a trial because most people are gonna sign up during that welcome flow. And so having a trial increases the conversions and most people are gonna sign up before they even create a doc, right? We know that stats show that about 60% of your in-app purchases and subscriptions come from that welcome flow. So make sure you have the optimal pricing structure with trials during that welcome flow. So I like that they're doing a trial and giving me three free text files to play around with. And I think it is worth doing. I've seen a couple of different clients do it too. And anecdotally, having trials tend to perform better, even if you're giving away five free sessions, seven free days for free before you lock them out. Definitely have some trials because most people are gonna convert during that welcome flow and they still feel a little bit better with having a trial. All right, guys, that's it. I wanted to create this video because it's such a simple app. It does well with ASO and it shows you that having such a simple app can actually be beneficial to your app portfolio, right? He's making over $90,000 a month from all his apps. And so 10,000 here, 40,000 here, another 10,000 here really starts adding up and being able to cross promote your current app to your new apps. It's a great way to drive downloads for any new app. And I don't think enough app developers are having that approach. All right, now if there's an app that you want me to check out, make sure you leave in a comment below. And then if there's a category of types of apps that you want us to check out, definitely leave that as well. And make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video.